Now, Radio Winchcombe joining us on our special show today. Let's say hello to Mr. Tom Milner. Hello, Tom. Hi, Louis. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. How are you? Good. Good, thank you, yeah. So thank you for agreeing to, uh, to come on this uh, Waterloo Road special. Uh, so it's obviously, you were in the show for a very long time. Uh, do you have fond memories of the show? Do you know what? I do. Um, but it's like, it's that long ago now. Yeah. That I've, I haven't forgotten about it, but, it, you know, it takes a while to use my now adult brain to go back to remember the memories. Because <laughs> how old were you when you first actually started on, on the show? So when I first got... Um, yeah, John, the show, I was I had a week left at school, so I was like 15 to 10, 16. So I had to have my dad and my mum actually chaperoning me for my first week on the job. Wow. Um, and then from then on, I was a, a young adult, as I say. Because you were in uh, quite a lot of episodes as well, and, and a lot of series. So um, do you have like a standout moment? I know you just said it's kind of hard to, to remember it as well, but mm. is there anything that you stands out to you? Yeah, um, well, I was only supposed to join the show for one episode, which was my first episode where Paul Langley, my character, was getting beaten up by my uncle. Uh, so once I'd done the episode, I thought, well, that's it, you know, my time's up, and then they were like, well, actually, we'd like to give you a year contract, and then it ended up being four or five years, uh, which is unbelievable. But my standout um, sort of memory is when we uh, filmed the prison episode where all, like, the naughty boys had to go on a prison trip to... Um, kind of uh, sort of sort of lives out if you like yeah. and we had to go to London actually to film in the bad girl studio uh, and it was just a week away with you know the lads and it was just an absolute laugh staying in the holiday in in London um, and yeah perfect it was it was a great experience and have you stayed in in contact with uh, some other cast members that you've made friends with on the show yeah sure I mean um, I speak to Tatia who played my uh, kind of sidekick well, I play this sidekick, Bolton Smiley, so um, yeah, I keep in contact with him. In fact, we were speaking yesterday because he's doing a show in London, and that's where I'm based now. Wow. Um, so yeah, we're going to meet up. Uh, still speak to Dean, who played Philip quite a bit. Um, and yeah, some of the young actors as well, like Eva Pope, keep in contact with Eva and things like that. So yeah, it's, you know, we have, although the ship carries on going, you know, you, you still kind of keep in contact with those people because it was a big part of, of my course. life and theirs as well. And I know now, obviously, um, away from acting, you've moved in uh, to the music side of things as well. So, what made you kind of uh, transition from from acting and go into music? Is it what you're is it what you're most passionate about? Uh, well, when I left Waterloo Road, I kind of did a bit of Holby City, um, and then um, I got a casting breakdown for a musical uh, for for a show called uh, Soho Cinders, which was produced by and wrote by. Um, Styles and Drew, which have done you know your Peter Pan's, your honks, are quite quite big musicals, and it was my first kind of big musical audition, um, and I ended up getting it, playing uh, the lead in London, and that's when I was kind of like, you know what, I should be doing more with my singing. Yeah. Um, so I mean, doing musicals that kind of incorporated both acting and singing at the same time, which was perfect for me. Um, but stage is a lot different to doing television as you can imagine you know you can do many many takes yeah. in theatre you can it's a case of you've got to get it right um, but then that kind of made me go you know what I should really uh, delve into my music more so I, I play my acoustic guitar I'm, I'm touring up and down the country all the time doing different different places different venues doing a lot of weddings as well you know from, and that was from the back of one of the, the voice on uh, when it was on BBC actually the last BBC um, before it moved over to ITV uh, and I got approached to go on and, and do that and then from that then it's just opened up more doors um, yeah I'm just like I say gigging everywhere which is great how amazing is that to kind of be invited to someone's big special day to perform that must make you feel kind of amazing it is amazing, yes. Yeah. I mean, I get so many in a week, and it's yeah. you know, it's so special, as you say. Uh, it is even more special, you know. Sometimes I've got to write first songs for people, which is really cool, uh, and also performing their their first dance, which can be, <laughs> you know, you've got again, you've got to get that right. Um, and it's usually like me, the photographer and the DJ on that on the on their special day, really nervous in the corner, going right, let's just pray that we get through this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but it's great it's great and obviously you just you mentioned uh, prior to that obviously going on to The Voice that's uh, a, a different thing as well because you're going on there you're, you're getting the exposure it's the best way to get uh, publicity as well so when you went on there and you, you, you can see all the coaches in front of you 
what was going mm. through your mind? Because it's a completely different step for you as well. You, you've you've already done TV. You're you're well known, and you're going on to a on to a show, uh, which almost gets you uh, even more known as well. Yeah, uh, do you know what? That's probably the most scariest experience I've had in my life. You know, when you walk out on the stage on on the voice and stand in front of your microphone, they tell you to wait there ten seconds. Now on TV, it looks like two seconds and you start singing but they want to get all the right shots on you yeah. so you've got to stay there for about 10 seconds which feels like 10 hours um, and then the song starts and then you don't really get the, you know like the noise effects that goes doosh and the chairs turn yeah. uh, they say to you before you go out look you won't hear when um, the coach, if the coaches turn around so you know you'll probably see it so don't be surprised and shocked so I was just singing away uh, thinking you know what I've got a minute and a half to perform on national television and I'm going to just perform and if I look stupid I look stupid but I'm just going to enjoy it uh, and that kind of overtook the nerves and then I was just singing doing a stupid jump and I looked and then Ricky Wilson from the Kaiser Chiefs were just uh, sat there looking at me and I was like oh he's turning <laughs> cool um, which is really cool and then Ricky afterwards actually said to me he, he, you know he whispered in my ear look it must be really hard Um when you've got a bit of a TV background, I find, I find it harder for them contestants that are coming on have got to prove a point because they're professional in what they do. You know, whereas other contestants, you know, one of them were a fishmonger, other ones are working in factories, so it's less pressure on them, if you like, because they've not been seen in the public eye before and judged before. Yeah. Uh, so a really nice comment that Ricky Ricky said to me once I got the chair turn. And yeah, experience. Um, again, met some fantastic people on on, on the job. Uh, and yes, yeah, still email Ricky now and again. He's a lovely lad. In fact, I went to um, a big festival last year with my fiance called Cornbury Festival, um, and the Kaiser Chiefs ended up headlining. And I'm stood in the crowd watching him. Um, and then Ricky just pointed me out in front of thousands and thousands of people. I don't know how because I weren't that close to the front. Yeah. Uh, I did have a red, bright red kazoo on, which probably didn't help. And he just <laughs> literally pointed out to me and went, "Tom," and I was like so embarrassed. I turned the colour of my kazoo on my face I was bright red so I ended up putting my hood up doing like a joke sort of embarrassing <laughs> like, no 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 don't put your up mate. everyone turn and look at Tom so everyone's looking at me and then he goes right mate you can do some crowd surfing now so I was like oh so yeah um, going back to the experience of the voice it was very good uh, and you know just to get a, an experience of getting um, opinions from four professionals in the industry you know people pay a lot of money for that and that's what I kind of you know said to myself so is your music currently released on, on Spotify? How can people actually get to hear your tracks? Uh, I'm currently, I, I'm, at the moment, I've got nothing. I did have something out there, but I've kind of brought it down because I'm, I'm going for a new sort of sound now. So I'm working with a couple of writers at the moment. Um, so it will be out there very soon. Um, but you can just keep checking on my Twitter, which is at Tom K. Milner, or on my Facebook, Tom Milner Music Page, uh, for when announcements are made but at the moment yeah just writing and you haven't got to rush the writing either it's got to be so personal to you um, and also you've got to go through so many bad songs when you're writing to then get to the good songs which, that sounds really strange but it's, yeah. it's like Ed Sheeran once described um, like it sounds horrible like, like a sewer tap and you just keep it on and keep it keep it going on until the clear water comes out and that is what songwriting is like because you've got to remember you know we are writing these songs listening to them every day and then you just like you get bored of it and you don't end up liking it so you just put it to one side so it's a very difficult process but that's why it's important to have other writers that are around you that can go off try this try that um, so yeah it's a really interesting process actually have you ever been in a situation where say for instance you've you've been out uh, for a meal or something like that and you've kind of had a beat of a song in your head and, and it's like you know I need to write this down do you have to record it on your phone how does that process work oh yeah I mean luckily we've got the technology now where you just go into your voice and, yeah. and just start singing into your phone and public and people are looking at you really weird but <laughs> you've got to do it you know if you get like um, sort of a beat in your head because I don't, I don't read or write music it's all in my like when I, whenever I hear a song or harmony, it's all in my in my ears. It sounds weird, but I you know you either get those that are technically gifted or those that are, have got it um, and musically, and that's what I've kind of got it musically. So if I think of something, I just start singing something in my head, which is quite often. Just get the old voice memos out on the iPhone, start singing to your phone, 
and uh, get weird people looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, honestly, it's been amazing having you on the show. Thanks for joining us for the for Waterloo Road Pleasure. Special. And I think a lot of people would love to hear that you kind of you've gone from playing pool with the kid that always was in trouble with Bolton, and actually you've grown yeah. up and you're working on something that you, you're clearly passionate about uh, as well. You can tell that when you're on the Voice. Uh, you, I've heard the stuff on YouTube that you do as well. So you know, I'm looking forward, and hopefully we get to play it on the show as well. Plus, it, and it's great to do an interview because I took the last two years out actually before this year. I took two years off because I've done the performing side for since I was 13. And it doesn't sound long, but it actually is. I'm now 26. Yeah. Um, and I kind of lost love for it, if I'm being honest. And then I took two years out, ended up turning in coffee, which was very different. But I love, I love coffee. Um, and then I came back into it in January, and I'm now with an agent in London who's brilliant, who's working for me fantastically. So it's um, it's all kicking off again. That happens, doesn't it? If you're away from something that you do all the time, uh, you actually realise mm. you miss it. But when you do it all the time, sometimes it gets repetitive or, or a bit boring even. And it's only when you're yeah. away from it, you're like, actually, I really miss this. I need to get back into it. Yeah. When I was younger and I had the hunger, I was getting, you know, jobs uh, and or, or at least getting very far. And um, then, like, three years ago, I was going to auditions and I weren't, sounds bad, but I weren't wanting the job. Yeah. And then I come out of the audition and go, why have I not got that job? And it took me about a year to realise then, you know what, you're not getting a job because you, you've lost love for it. You need to just take two years out or however long it is um, and then go back into it. And I find a lot of actors do do that because, you know, I think there's some mad stat about how there's like 90 plus percent of us that are out of work. Um, and, you know, when, when you're in the business and you get a, I don't know, like you're trying to sell, say, like an office chair or something like that, and, you know, there's a group of 10 of you that get to, and help each other to get over. Whereas when you're an actor, it's just doing it alone out there. It's a big old crazy world, um, and it takes a lot of pressure. Um, rejection is yeah. not very nice, uh, and it, you, no matter how old you get, and more experience you get, you know, it's still not a very nice experience when you get the when you get so far to an audition, you put so much effort in, and go, you know what? You haven't got it because you just slightly too tall. And that sounds crazy, but that happens, and um, that's why it was so important for me to take the two years out to. Uh, get the hunger back again well that's absolutely amazing and honestly we'll support the music on the show as well if you, if you send it in we'll Bless definitely you. get it thank played you. thank you so much for joining us thank you so much thank Bless you thank you